Hey guys, welcome back to my bus build. I've got so much to update you on, um, so we'll just get straight into it and then after my little update, which is very important, we'll get into the rest of this build. So pretty much a few months ago, a little bit after I posted my last video where I did the installation, I kind of like hit a wall because I couldn't insulate anymore or like do the vapor barrier because we still had things to cut out like the um, shower hatch, water fills and stuff like that. But we also had to run the cables for my electrical wiring. So I emailed the guy who like originally was going to do it and he said he was fully booked till next year. And I thought like, not again, like not hitting another wall with outsourcing jobs because that's happened so many times this year but then I remembered that the people who do my gas installation um a water RV superstore in French Gully not sponsored they're just really really good people said they could run my cables so I called them up and I was booked in within two minutes and then the night before we drove the bus there we actually my dad and I had a chat and we said like why don't we just get them to do a few other jobs we can't we don't really want to do like cutting out the shower hatch and stuff like that why don't we just get them to do it as well and they did that as well so um yeah i'm gonna show you what they did in a second but i was I, i'm super happy with what they did it was they like such have such good pricing it's fair priced and yeah i'm just really happy and especially with stuff that i didn't really know much about like solar setup they had a really good understanding of different needs because they obviously do so many like motorhomes and camper vans so, for example, I was just going to get one 240 volt power point and I ended up getting three because they just said you don't want to have just one power point and then have to use like an extension cord. Like you just want to make it the bus as accessible and as comfortable as as possible. So they were super helpful and they did a bunch of other jobs. So definitely recommend if you're in Melbourne and you need help outsourcing, they can do pretty much everything related to like caravans and camper vans. And yeah, it's really exciting because now we can start building, which you'll see in this episode. Obviously, I'm waiting for a few things to arrive, um, and I'll get into that later. But yeah, I'm really happy with that, and that's my main update. The other thing I did is I went to Autobahn, which I'm pretty sure Autobahns are across Australia. But I went there to get a reverse camera and a head unit installed. So they took out my old radio and installed like a little screen, which is so cool because now I have... Apple CarPlay, not that you need it, but it's already like enough of like a task to drive the bus because it's so big. So I thought it's better to have like a good navigation system rather than having to like rely on like your phone or something like that. And definitely needed the reverse camera anyway because I don't try to reverse the bus because I've hit many things. <laughs> I haven't actually. Um, so yeah, I did that. So I definitely would recommend Autobahn. I'm sure you could go to another place like that to get it installed but it was just one of those jobs I thought like I'm not going to spend another 10 weeks like researching and like trying to find new places I just went to Autobahn they were 10 minutes away from where I lived and I'm really happy with what they did so those are the main things and now it's like so cool because I don't need to like it's I literally my dad and I can now just build whereas before it was like build and then wait for like two months to get booked in or get another job like outsourced by someone else but now we can really start the build I'm just waiting on the wood that's arriving for um my ceiling which is so pretty and yeah I hope you enjoy this video and make sure to like and subscribe and comment if you have any questions or suggestions okay so here's the head unit that I got and this is what it looks like um actually installed so it's really fast as well like as soon as you turn the bus on it turns on it it doesn't glitch which I'm really happy about okay now I'm going to show you what I got done at a water RV. It's quite a long list of jobs, so hopefully I don't forget any. So first things first, they ran all of my electrical wiring. And basically the only thing is that makes it really easy for them or like makes it, gets you the best like results is that you go and like you mark where you want everything to go, which is what I did because that made it really easy for them to know what to do. I probably, it did make it a little bit hard that I had insulated, but it didn't really matter too much. Just a few things they had to like rip out and like, Free tape at the end but yeah they wired up my max air fan um did all those things for my lights like yeah just everything so down here is where we decided my batteries and everything will go which is why all the solar power cables end here and then they also um which you can't see but they also drilled a hole in the roof that's why they retaped it 
drill a hole in the roof and put a cable in to connect to my solar panels. And then at the top of the roof, they just like clamped it off and like covered it for rain. So that like when I get my solar panels installed, I don't have to rip out like wooden stuff. It's they can just connect the solar panels and then it's already connected um, down to here. This here is a shower hatch they installed, which I'm going to show you outside in a second. But they also did plumbing from that to the hot water system. And the only thing they didn't do is install water fillers, which I had asked them to do, but their plumber was like sick. But that's fine because we think that my water fillers are going to go back here and we can just like slide in a panel and like not cover that yet, I guess. Also, here are my downlights. Like how pretty are they? But then, yeah, this grey cable here is that's 240 volts. I've got a 240 volt one here. Then I've got one here. They put in an external power point. So if I'm like sitting outside, I can plug in like a toaster or something, which is so cool. And then here's a little power point to connect into um, shore power, at like caravan sites, which they convinced me to do and I'm really glad I did it. did it. And then finally we have my favorite part, which is the shower hatch, which is so cool. And then you put like a little thing up here which connects, like, like holds it up and you can like, have a room shower and you install in the morning. So today I'm going to walk you through how my dad installed the Dometic HQ2 skylight in my bus, which is pretty much the biggest size skylight you can get. So first things first, he built a frame and then we marked it out using the screwdriver and whiteboard markers and then he got straight into cutting it out. Now, as you can see, before we cut it out, he actually installed an internal frame, which wasn't put together. It was like single pieces of wood that we glued in on all the sides, and that became the internal frame, which you can see here. And the little cutouts are for the clamps that come with the skylight, which you'll see later. So lots of little measuring that you have to do. I also want to emphasize that the bus roof is really curved, so the frame my dad built is based on these curves, and it's really important. Alongside gluing in the internal frame, we also screwed it in here and then we took the skylight and just checked to see that the hole was big enough. After the inner frame was secured, we used this mastic slash butyl sealant tape to make the roof level for the external frame to sit on top and have like no leaks because there's lots of like little dints as you can see in the bus roof that we needed to fill out. We used several layers of tape all around and then we used Sikaflex to put on the external frame and then that all got pushed onto the roof and then what we did is we put the skylight in temporarily and screwed it in using the clamps to act as like a big clamp to pull down the external frame and seal the sigaflex overnight and then the next day we put silicone on the actual skylight and then put it in and properly clamped it down and just something I read was the main failure that comes with installing these skylights is that people over clamp the clamps. They make them really tight, which leads to cracking over time. So just keep that in mind if you do install this skylight. And then last of all, on top of the roof, we made sure that all the Sikaflex and silicone and tape was like properly sealed. And if there was little gaps, we filled some in with extra silicone. So we've been having like 40 mil of rain so I thought I would check on the skylight and there are no leaks even after like hours of rain and even on the roof the water like hasn't built up which I thought it like might um so yeah that did a perfect installation
Fenster rein, sag mal hallo. Komm ah. her, hey Kelly. Komm her. Ich hate it. More than I ever hated something.